We in New Orleans for this one. This is probably going to be our most brutally detailed story thus far, and it might leave an imprint on you when you're done watching and listening. We not going to waste any time, let's get into it. In December of 2010, the FBI sought and secured a court-authorized wiretap of two of Montreal Delaney's telephones. The FBI monitored a man named Montreal Delancey's telephone calls for approximately 60 days, until the end of February 2011. During that time period, the FBI obtained a court-ordered spin-off wiretap on two of the phones used by Montreal Delaney supplier, Gregory Stewart. An analysis of toll records, recorded calls on the wiretaps, surveillance conducted by FBI agents, witness interviews, and statements from confidential sources, assisted agents in identifying Gregory Stewart and his drug trafficking organization. Stewart was identified as Delaney's supplier. He was also the leader of several drug associates, all of whom distributed or assisted in the distribution of heroin in the New Orleans area. They will show up in the story later. Gregory Stewart, a.k.a. Rabbit, grew up in the Ninth Ward, in a neighborhood permeated by drug use, drug dealing, and gun violence. Growing up in not the best circumstances, he had to do what he had to do for money, even tap dancing by putting bottle tops on the bottom of his shoes. At the age of 11, Gregory sold two ounces of cocaine per week for a known drug dealer, who obtained his drugs from a known source of supply. Mostly he sold weed though, just petty hustling at the time. By the time he was 15, Gregory Stewart had been taught to shoot and carry a handgun. He had started selling heroin, and got his supply from an older guy named Daryl Franklin, aka, Breezy. The group of individuals frequently congregated on the 1300 block of Gallier Street, known as the G-Strip. This was where Breezy's mother's house was located. Rabbit was acquainted with Breezy and his partner, Slugger, and it was said that Slugger was also a killer. Breezy and Slugger felt that Rabbit had a heart, so they kept him around. Rabbit was young and small in stature at the time, so Breezy and Slugger gave him an opportunity to transport heroin from Houston back to Louisiana on the Greyhound bus. It was a low chance police would suspect the young man of having drugs. Around this time, he got his nickname, Rabbit. His older friend, Louis Daniels, gave him the name. According to Rabbit, Louis Daniels was allegedly a killer who didn't play games. He was alleged to be the one who told Rabbit how to kill, to hit the body, and when they fall, stand over them, and shoot them until they are dead. The Rabbit name stemmed from an eventful late night on the G-Strip. Law enforcement had spotted Rabbit and surrounded him. He had a gun on him, and had to think quickly to get out of the situation. As the cops were about to do their search procedure, he basically rushed them, forcing the cops to slam him to the ground for resisting. He played as if he was knocked out due to the slam. The cops backed up and became lax for a moment, that's when he hopped up and got low. He was running away full speed and ditched the gun while he was at it. Sometime around this time, Rabbit witnessed his first murder. He and some of the G-Strip guys were hanging out by the alley after a club outing. It was about 2 in the morning. A male named Calvin Brumfield came out the alley and began shooting at a dude named Baby, while Baby was sitting in a car. Calvin shot Baby nine times, emptying the clip. Rabbit was in the car at the time. In response, all the G-Strip members began chasing Calvin, who was attempting to make it to a getaway car. The G-Strip members knew Calvin ran out of bullets and were closing the distance. Sure enough they caught him by a gate, which they dragged him off of and began beating him. He was choked out by one of the guys, and the beating continued. Another G-Strip member came with a gun, and a quick deliberation came as to who was going to kill Calvin. Tyson Bell would take the task of killing Calvin, grabbing the 38 caliber gun, and shooting him in the head. A little after this, Rabbit would get locked up and be out the game for almost a year and a half. Rabbit's older friend, Lewis, the one he got the name from, had went to jail for a murder sometime before Rabbit ever got locked up. He killed someone from the Florida projects, and the person's mother was a witness. Lewis wanted the witness dead. Rabbit was already locked up, so Lewis wanted Breezy to kill the witness, but Breezy wasn't with it. Lewis ended up beating the case even though the mother took the stand. Lewis was lucky, but was ready to kill whoever didn't hold him down. According to Rabbit, while Slugger was locked up for robbery, Breezy failed to support Slugger, causing the two to fall out. Breezy would continue to get his drugs from Houston for the time being. According to Breezy though, while Slugger was in jail for a robbery, Breezy developed a relationship with another dude, Merle. 
It started when Merle was having trouble moving his drugs, because Breezy had the best dope in the downtown area. He approached Breezy and Breezy sold some to Merle on one occasion. That's when things started. Later down the line, Breezy would eventually start getting drugs from Merle. Merle also advised Breezy to be weary of Slugger, that he shouldn't hang with him because of Slugger's reputation of robbing and killing. Breezy was the only one from the Florida Projects who trusted Slugger, who was from the Desire Projects. Breezy told Slugger how Merle felt about him, and Slugger would approach Merle about it. He threw some extra lies in there and told Slugger some stuff about Breezy. Breezy and Merle fell out because of this, but when Slugger was in jail for robbery, Breezy and Merle sat down and talked. They hashed things out and resumed their partnership. Breezy and Merle knew that Slugger was coming home and would not be happy about this. But they decided they would have to whack Slugger. When Slugger came home from jail, him and Breezy were still cool. Breezy took Slugger to a concert with intentions to kill him, but ended up not doing it though. Slugger kept asking Breezy about their dope connect, B, who Slugger had left with 4 ounces of dope before he got locked up. Breezy was unable to locate at the time and was also trying to find B, because he had some of Breezy's money. Slugger did not believe him though, and thought he was lying to him. At age 16, Rabbit was released from the state juvenile authorities after serving a 14-month sentence for being in a stolen car. He knew Slugger and Breezy weren't cool anymore and had to figure out which side to play. He spoke with Lewis and Slugger together and then with Breezy separately. Each meeting resulted with one wanting him to set the other up to be murdered. Rabbit had closer ties to Breezy, having been with his sister for a while and had taken Breezy's children to school on occasion, but Rabbit figured he'd remain neutral. He warned Slugger and Lewis though, if anybody gets killed on the G-strip, he coming for whoever's responsible. Soon, Rabbit met Merle through Breezy by the Wing Shack. The Wing Shack was the main hustling spot. It was located on Desire Street near the Florida Projects, a little ways from Breezy Mom's spot on the G-strip. Breezy had already spoken to Merle about Rabbit, and Merle talked with Rabbit about the split with Slugger. Basically giving him the same talk the Lewis and Slugger gave him. Merle was a hustler, and Rabbit was given $10,000 and a kilogram of heroin by Merle, Breezy and others, to induce him to sell drugs for them. He took the drugs back down to the G-strip. He got the strip popping by giving out samples of dope. Some of the guys from the Florida started coming to the G-strip to get money with Rabbit. A dude named Evans came, as well as a guy named Pound, who Rabbit knew from Juvenile. They were brothers and Merle's nephews. Then there was Leroy and Tired. Others came later. Rabbit started living in a motel, sold drugs to pay the motel room charges, owned a car, and otherwise, pretended to be an adult, despite his young age. In early July of 2009, while on the G-strip, Rabbit received a call from Lewis. He informed Rabbit that he was coming over there to put in work and for Rabbit to be out the way. At that moment, Rabbit told the guys to be ready or whatever. Just as Rabbit had gave the warning, Lewis pulled up on a strip with another guy, Co, from the projects. He hopped out of Dodge Charger and started shooting, hitting four people. Rabbit pushed Breezy's sister down to protect her from gunfire, while Lewis fled in the car. Lewis called Rabbit shortly after, praising himself for his gun game. Lewis explained that he wanted to kill Breezy and whoever else was loyal to him, so he could return to that area. He knew Breezy had more money than him and could convince someone to knock him off, so it wasn't wise for him to come around. But now things was serious. Rabbit replied aggressively to Lewis because two of the people shot were from the G-strip. Rabbit didn't know the guys from the Florida Project too well at the time, so they were pretty much fair game, but G-strip members were off-limits. He expressed this to Lou and Lou responded something like, don't worry, that slugger and himself wasn't out to beef with Rabbit. Rabbit told Lewis that the deal is over, and now he is involved since Lewis violated. He hung the phone up. He had to be ready, because they wouldn't hesitate to kill him. This solidified Rabbit's alliance with Breezy and Merle. A little less than a month later, on August 6, 2009, Lewis Daniels was killed in New Orleans. Merle had an alliance with a man named Lil. Lil was a leader from off of 3rd and Galvez, which was located in Central City some miles away. Their crew was called 3NG. Lil would get locked up around 2010, and Rabbit went to visit him on occasion. He told Rabbit to make sure guys on 3rd and Galvez was straight, that they were hustlers too, and he could put them on. 
Rabbit and his other guys from the G-Strip would spend time on 3rd and Galvez, making it lit with the DJ parties and whatnot. The females started calling them the 39ers. The 3 stands for 3rd and Galvez, and the 9 stood for the 9th Ward, which was guys from the Florida Project and the G-Strip. Rabbit rose in the drug game through a process of cutting the dope with Manitil. He was able to supply everyone generously. This included Montreal Delaney, whose phone was tapped and frequently bought large quantities of dope from Rabbit. From approximately late 2009 through his arrest in May of 2011, Montreal Delaney regularly purchased heroin from Rabbit and used him as his main heroin supplier. Rabbit fronted Delaney heroin, and Delaney would repair Abbott at a later time. In an average month, Delaney would purchase approximately one half kilogram of heroin from Rabbit. He charged Delaney approximately $2,000 per ounce. In January of 2010, Breezy shot a dude named Bernard. Bernard was cool with a rival Desire neighborhood and was playing both sides. To avoid a setup on Breezy, him and Rabbit decided to kill him. Rabbit called Bernard and asked him where he at, and he responded, the bus. Breezy and Rabbit jumped in the car to meet him, and Bernard was none the wiser. When they got there and seen him, Rabbit told Breezy, let me get him, but Breezy decided to do it himself. Also, Breezy wanted Bernard to see it was him killing him. Bernard made his way toward the vehicle. Instead of talking to him after shooting him, allegedly, Breezy said to Bernard, you know what it is. Bernard kicked the door closed and took off. Breezy shot like 23 bullets at him. He had success, but Bernard didn't fall, so Breezy ran back to the car. While in the hospital and with police, Bernard called Rabbit and asked what that was about. Breezy reinforced his prior message, you know what it is. Police had ended up raiding Breezy's mom's house on Gallier Street. Rabbit was only wanted for questioning, and Breezy had bonded out. Rabbit heard Bernard at court mention his name and Breezy's, so he slipped out of court before suspicion rose. Meanwhile, there was an attempt on Slugger's life. Not really an attempt, but more like an attempted attempt. Merle sent an order to 3NG member, Trap, to kill someone he suspected was Slugger. The person was sitting in an infinity that belonged to a guy named Gutter, who was another rival. Trap shot the guy up in the car, but it wasn't Slugger. The dude had ties to the A 39ers gang member named Evans. Evans went to the hospital to see the guy, to deter him from telling. He told him it was a mistake or whatnot, and the guy agreed not to tell. One day, someone named Percy from the Florida Project and G-Strip area was shot and paralyzed. Word was, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was shot by guys from Press Park. Press Park was aligned with the guys from where the Desire Projects used to be, right across the tracks from the Florida Projects. Portions of both projects had been torn down. G-Strip and Florida was too strong together, so the Press Park and the Desire Project members increased their numbers by aligning with one another. It was learned that Percy was shot by a guy named Marty, and Percy's son was in the car with him when he was shot. According to Rabbit, Wu D, who was the closest to Percy, was a little hesitant to retaliate. Rabbit told him to some extent that he has to get back and that he was willing to help him. Four members geared up to retaliate in two stolen vehicles. Rabbit and Pound were in a F-150 truck, and Wu D traveled in a Honda Jeep with another member named, Real. They went to the Bunker Hill, which was located on the east. Merle, Breezy and Rabbit had did a drill, shooting at the same spot and house once before, but wasn't sure if it was the right place. This night, they were looking for a green Monte Carlo, a car that had once came through G-Strip shooting. Later that night, the car ended up coming through the Bunker Hill neighborhood. A man got out and went into the residence. Rabbit called the occupants of the Honda and told them the plan. The house was located in between two stop signs. Rabbit figured, when the people decide to leave, they could ambush them in a sandwich fashion. Stop at the sign, hop out, start shooting, while the other car come behind and does the same thing. Few hours later, some people came out and a girl was among them. Percy's son was with him when he was shot, so the G-Strip members were not remorseful. The group got in the Monte Carlo and headed towards Wu D and Reel's direction. Wu D and Reel stopped the Honda at the stop sign, and the people in the Monte Carlo stopped behind them. As Rabbit pulled up behind the Monte Carlo, Wu D and Reel got out and began shooting at the Monte Carlo. Wu D had a chopper, or a K-47, and Reel had a 9 caliber Glock. The car tried to back up, sandwiched between the Honda and the F-150. According to Rabbit, Pound got out the car with a chopper and started shooting the car up too. 
There was no more movement in the car, so they fled the scene. Percy heard about the shooting, and although it wasn't the exact guy, Percy was thankful anyway. Another person named Pugi ended up getting indicted for the murder. He was from 8th Ward's Ride or Die Gang (ROD), which were also rivals of the G-Strip. They became rivals when ROD allegedly shot at Rabbit's car for no reason while someone else was driving it. Rabbit was in school around that time, and when he heard about it, vowed to get revenge at some point. Sometime in April of 2010, Rabbit attended a teen party with some of the guys in the downtown area. Real, Pound, Evans, and others were there also, and Rabbit stayed in Elo's Cadillac talking to a female. When the party was over, a shootout took place between 39ers and another group of men. Rabbit, who was in the driver's seat, was unsure why or who the guys were, but he ducked while the shooting was going on. Real was behind the driver's seat, hanging out the window letting off multiple shots from an AK-47. Rabbit pulled away, and they went to a female associate's house where they dropped the guns off. Pound, who initially did not arrive at the party with Rabbit, called and told him he was left behind, so Rabbit spins back to get him. While the crew was talking about the shooting, Rabbit noticed the police trailing them, but they didn't have their lights or sirens on. Because of the location they were at, Rabbit knew they couldn't outrun them, and began asking if anyone had guns. Pound, who was recently picked up, had a handgun. Rabbit pulled over to a store so they could stash the gun in a random aisle. When they came out the store, they made everyone get down on the ground. The cops said the truck had been in a shooting, and they began searching it. They didn't find any guns and told Rabbit he was going to be charged with driving with a suspended license. They examined Real, who looked suspicious because he was shaking on the ground. The cops knew something was up, so they went into the store and played the cameras back. They seen them stash the gun. Pound was charged with the gun, and Evans and Rabbit was taken into custody as well. Rabbit asked Merle if he would help with bail money, but Merle told him something to the extent that, those were Rabbit's little homies, and they need to learn how to save money for a rainy day like this. Rabbit gave Pound's mother the money to bond Pound out. One day, members, Breezy, Merle, Leroy, Pound, Evans, Gucci Man and Cheddar Black, were hanging out by the wing shack. Slugger had pulled up in a car, and was talking to someone nearby. Rabbit went to get the gun, anticipating that something was about to happen, because Slugger should know better than to be on the G-strip. The police rolled through right after, prompting Rabbit to put the gun away. It was a Caltech 223. The cops said a couple things about loitering and pulled off. Two minutes later, Gutter, Co and another dude, Bo, pulled up in a vehicle. They began shooting multiple rounds at the porch. Rabbit had took off right before the shots and went to retrieve the gun. He returned, but the assailants had pulled off. Two G-Strip members, Gucci Man and Cheddar Black, was killed. Cheddar Black was a major player on the New Orleans dope scene. Although Breezy and Merle were not related, Cheddar Black was their common cousin, and was also related to Pound and Evans. Merle had a XD-40 that jammed up during the shooting, and Rabbit unjammed it. He told Merle and Breezy that the assailants wasn't too far, and they could catch them. They got in Merle's Audi and pursued the shooters, making a stop to pick up a K-47 they stashed in the grass for protection. They spotted Gutter, Co and Bo by the Desire Project. Co and Bo hopped out to stash their guns, while Gutter remained in the car. Rabbit told Merle to pull over so he could get out and kill Co and Bo, while Breezy and Merle kill Gutter who was in the car. When they hopped out the car, Merle and Breezy started shooting first. At the same time, Rabbit was shot in the arm by Merle by accident, as he was attempting to get to Cohen Bo. This was Merle's first drill like this, so Rabbit understood. The gun Rabbit had was holding 70 rounds, so it was heavy, and he couldn't get to Cohen Bo with a damaged arm. He could reach Gutter though, so he just unloaded a barrage of bullets until he wasn't moving. Cohen Bo had already dropped their guns and fled. Rabbit was hit, and Breezy dropped him off at the hospital and pulled off. He lied and told them he was shot by the wing shack. He was questioned at the hospital, then the police headquarters before getting picked up by some friends. Altogether, 48 shell casings found. Meanwhile, Breezy and two others, Derek and Baby, were riding around looking for Slugger, to kill him. Baby is the one who got shot up some time ago when Rabbit witnessed his first murder. With an injured arm, Rabbit told Merle, let's go, I still can shoot. They headed towards the east to find Slugger. By this time, Breezy was riding with Leroy and Nelly in one car, while Baby, Poonie, Derek, and Trap was in another. 
When Rabbit and Merle were attempting to catch up with the guys, they heard a lot of gunshots and seen all the lights go off on Alminster Avenue. They were riding through when Rabbit got a call from Trap. Trap explained that he was by the place where Rabbit gets marijuana from and that everyone he was in the car with was dead. Allegedly, the car he was riding in crashed into a house. Rabbit and Merle picked up Trap on Alminster and took him uptown. Later that day, it was learned that Baby had been killed. Derek and Pooney survived, but Derek got locked up because he didn't talk and because Rabbit's AK-47 was in the car, which was registered to Rabbit. The 39ers lost three members of the gang all in one day, Gucci Man, Cheddar Black, and Baby. On May 11, 2010, Rabbit got word that ROD member, Ray Sean, was on foot by a store. He still wanted to get back for the time they shot his car up. Tensions were high because Rabbit had already let them know he was going to catch on of them. He told Pound to accompany him and they grabbed the 223 Keltec and the Carbon 15 rifle. Driving in Rabbit's blue Taurus that was nicknamed Homicide, they stalked the guy who was walking with a female. The Taurus was a vehicle police so the guy, Ration, avoided eye contact with the car. The female went inside a residence on a side street and Ration was on her next to the porch. Pound and Rabbit hopped out and shot him multiple times until he was dead. They got back in the car and drove downtown like nothing happened. Jamal Smith, who Rabbit had known from school, was believed to have killed a 3NG member named AP. Jamal was from the Kalia Projects. On May 19, 2010, members were supporting Nelly at his probation meeting. They spotted Jamal coming out of a car and Rabbit told Nelly to hold Jamal up and not to let him leave. Rabbit, along with Leroy, hurried to 3NG territory to retrieve a gun. It was only three minutes away from the courthouse. He saw Tear Ed and Trap and told them that they had the drop on Jamal. Tear Ed and Trap was excited because the man Jamal was suspected of killing was Trap's close associate. Trap and Red got the guns and got in the car with Rabbit and Leroy. It was a rental van, which had tinted windows, except for the, the front carriage. They returned to the courthouse and Nelly returned, and another G-Strip member who had probation, Sean, got in the van. Jamal said farewell to the 39ers by chucking up a deuce, and Leroy returned the gesture by honking the horn. Leroy pulled off with a van full of 39ers and parked a half a block down. Jamal had been waiting for a ride, which came, picked him up, and rode past the van. The 39ers trailed the car, which was an Acura, and when they reached a split, it was time to make a decision. Trap asked Rabbit, what you want to do? They were right by the courthouse, and police presence was nearby. They were also an out-of-town rental van, making things more risky to pull off. Rabbit responded, man, eff it, let's make history man, wild out. Red and Trap hopped out beside the Acura, but the guns were on safety when they tried to shoot. A woman was able to escape the vehicle. Trap took the safety off and let loose through the windshield. Red had Rabbit's carbon 15 and went to work as well. Jamal miraculously survived this shooting. Another guy, Lester Green, was killed. The 39ers jumped back in the van and escaped. Everyone was dropped off and the guns were stashed. Rabbit watched the news and figured the police didn't have anything on them because the van was described wrong along with other inconsistencies. The crew later took the pictures of the crime scene and made shirts that said, laugh now, cry later. This is a 39ers story, but don't get it twisted, Jamal was a demon as well by all means. Him and the guys from the Caliop have their own story. In fact, Jamal was charged with murder in 2021. But let's get back to the story though. A week after the shooting of Jamal, t Red and Rabbit was transporting one of the big guns to Merle when they spotted a Burgundy Maxima by a Louisa Street store. It was Bo's girlfriend's car, but Bo would ride around in it. Hopefully by now you know who Bo is. Anyway, Rabbit kept moving, called Leroy, relayed the situation to him, and told Leroy to keep an eye out. Rabbit told Tear Ed that he wanted to punish that boy when he comes out the store, but Tear Ed was like, nah I want to handle that. Leroy called and told them that Bo left the store and was making his way towards where Rabbit were posted. Bo stopped at a stop sign, and Tear Ed got out and shot. According to Rabbit, the guy jumped as if he got hit. The car kept moving, but slowly, because Bo jumped to the backseat. Red pulled up to the car and kept shooting the guy while he was in the backseat. They went to Merle's mom's house afterward and told him they killed Bo. Merle responded by saying, come on, we out to Miami. About 12 members went to Miami for Memorial Day. 
It was most of the G-Strip guys, but Tirad, who was 3NG went too. Out of all the 3NG guys, Rabbit was the closest to Tirad. Turned out later, that this was not Bo and in fact another person from the Desire named Donald. They found out via social media and rest in peace postings. They would have still killed Donald, but the fact still remained that Leroy didn't tell them that. Whole time, Rabbit and Tirad thought it was Bo. That summer, Merle had a retirement party at the Sports View in the 8th Ward. The whole 39ers came in limousines, drunk ace of spades, and threw a whole lot of money. Everybody chipped in for the party. Kid Kid, who was once a member of G-Unit, was also in attendance. Kid Kid's brother used to be on the G-Strip back in 2003, so Rabbit was familiar with him. He ended up getting him on a song with QP, who was another G-Strip member. Merle had $100,000 in cash on him that night, and because he was drinking, which was not a habit of his, he told Rabbit to keep an eye on him. It was a good night for the 39ers though. On or about October 11, 2010, Breezy called Rabbit and told him he had a location on Bow in the 4th Ward. Leroy drove Breezy's M35 Infinity that was occupied by Rabbit and tracked down Bo at the location. Bo was on the porch with an old man. Breezy did not want his car at the scene of the shooting though, so they switched cars, and T-Red joined their efforts. T-Red had a 40 caliber, and Rabbit had the 223. They came back to the location and waited for Bo. When Bo entered his car and pulled off, they followed him. Leroy was going to cut in front of him, but they figured that idea might not be good, because if they shot him and he runs into their car, they could be stuck at the scene. They continued following Bo's vehicle to the 7th ward. Bo stopped and spoke to a female, and the three rode past him and turned the corner. According to Rabbit, he felt like Bo was telling the female that the car they were riding in looked familiar as they drove past. Anyway, Leroy parked the car, while Tear Ed and Rabbit hopped out and turned the corner towards Bo's car. Rabbit told the female she better get the F out of here, and she took off. Bo tried to slam his door shut, but it was too late. Rabbit had already gotten in his face, and started shooting the 223 in Bo's face. He kept shooting until his clip was almost empty. T-Red also shot Bo up as well. After this, they stashed the guns and went back downtown to the G-Strip. On December 20, 2010, at approximately 12.20 p.m., Renetta Lowe, a.k.a. Magnolia Shorty and Jerome Hampton, a.k.a. Man Man, were shot multiple times while seated inside a Chevrolet Malibu. Both were pronounced dead at the scene, as each suffered multiple gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. Discovered by Birdman, Magnolia Shorty and another woman, were the first women signed to Cash Money Records. Dubbed as the Queen of Bounce, her voice was sampled on Drake's In My Feelings record, you know. The Kiki, Do You Love Me, Are You Riding, that song. Magnolia Shorty received her nickname from Soldier Slim, also known as Magnolia Slim, because both had grown up in the dangerous Magnolia projects. There is also the possibility of Soldier Slim and Man Man being cousins. Soldier Slim is perhaps best known for featuring on the US number one hit, Slow Motion, by the rapper, Juvenile. Let's talk about what led up to the murder of Magnolia Shorty and in Man Man. According to cooperating witnesses, Man Man was a member of a rival drug gang and had a well-carned reputation for being a killer. At trial, a 3NG member named Freaky said he witnessed Man Man commit a murder in Texas. Man Man had an ongoing feud with members of the 3NG gang. Having recently returned home from prison, Man Man made it known that he was looking to kill Merle because he was supplying 3NG and any member of 3NG. They were in the club one night and Man Man was also there. Towards the end of the night, the 39ers told AD to let them know when Man Man was exiting and what car he was driving. AD gave them the wrong car, which occupied a female. However things went, they didn't catch Man Man that night. On December 20, 2010, Trap called Rabbit and mentioned that he seen Man Man at the Kalia project and that he needed him for the mission to kill Man Man. Rabbit made his way uptown to the 3NG area and the crew got the guns ready. Rabbit, Tear Ed, Trap, Freaky, and another member, T-Bone, were in a white Crown Victoria that was owned by Rabbit's girlfriend, V. The car was being driven by Nakam as the group was looking to locate Man Man. First they went to the Kalia but didn't see Man Man. Rabbit suggested they go to the Georgetown apartments. According to Rabbit, Tear Ed's girlfriend stayed there, Magnolia Shorty also stayed over there, and they already had word that Man Man also frequented the area. When they got there, they noticed the white Malibu, letting them know Jerome was in the apartments with Magnolia Shorty. 
they decided to go to the gas station to kill time. They went back to the apartments and put the code into the security gate. The car was still there, but was about to make a move. They waited in the car by the entrance, waiting for the Malibu to hit the speed bump to make a move. When it did, the 439ers exited the Crown Vic and opened fire with several semi-automatic weapons, killing Man Man and Magnolia Shorty. Rabbit was armed with a 40 caliber handgun that was nicknamed, Barak, T-Red was armed with a short AK-47, Trap was armed with a 9mm handgun that was named Michelle, and Freaky was armed with an SKS-762 semi-auto. T-Bone, who was driving the vehicle, was unarmed. While being fired upon, Magnolia Shorty, who was the driver of the Chevrolet, accelerated the vehicle, which crashed into a wooden fence near the rear of 6304 Bridgman Man Street. According to the police crime scene technician, there were over 50 spent casings at the scene of the murder. As Rabbit and the others were leaving the Georgetown apartments, he spotted an op from the desire down the road, but didn't have enough bullets to kill him. They kept it moving, heading to the G-Strip. On February 6, 2011, Rabbit and another G-Strip member, Willie Bill, shot and killed Calvin Celestine, aka Plucky, in furtherance of the overall drug conspiracy. Shortly before the shooting, Plucky gave Breezy approximately $60,000 in advance to purchase a kilogram of heroin. Once Breezy had the money for the heroin, he left New Orleans to travel to Houston to purchase the heroin. Rabbit was then directed to kill Plucky to avoid having to deliver the heroin when Breezy returned. According to Rabbit though, the reason Plucky was killed is because he was playing both sides of the fence. He was cool with the guys from the Desire Project area and the guys from the G-Strip, and that wasn't going to work. Rabbit and Willie Bill looked for and found Plucky, while he was sitting in a black Chevrolet Tahoe in the parking lot of his girlfriend's apartment complex. Rabbit and Willie Bill shot Plucky several times in the head, using the Carbon 15 and the 40 caliber. After the murder, Breezy gave Rabbit a portion of the heroin Breezy had purchased using Plucky's money, and approximately $9,000 as payment for the murder. A few days later, Rabbit and some of the guys were in the hotel that Wu Di worked at. Rabbit ended up forgetting that he left the 40 caliber there, and it would be found and reported. The gun was used in the Magnolia Shorty shooting, so Rabbit didn't want to go anywhere near it. Wu Di ended up getting fired because he rented the room, and he and Rabbit discussed how to get a little dude, or a young soldier, to take the rap for the gun. Soon after this, Rabbit obtained a tribute shirt for Plucky and attended his funeral with other G-Strip members to cover up the fact that he committed the murder. This is like the scene from Juice. On or about February 13, 2011, Rabbit spoke with Real, Evans, and Nelly. On the call, Nelly, Real, and Evans informed Rabbit that their rival, Ko, was at Lakeside Mall with some of his drug associates. They planned to attack Ko and another guy, Muddy, with Barak, the slang term for the 40 caliber handgun. They discussed their plan to determine which car Ko was driving, so that they could follow him. Rabbit arrived at the mall with another guy, to assist the others. They had already been looking for Ko since he participated in the murder of Cheddar Black. Merle wanted Ko dead too, so they knew they would get paid if they were successful. At the time, Ko was wanted for armed robbery. Merle asked Rabbit to put Ko on the phone, but that never happened. Rabbit started talking crazy to Ko, telling him he hit, and he's about to die basically. Ko started asking questions about how they killed his peoples, Bo included. He told the 39ers that they only caught Bo and whoever else because they be on pills, and basically lacking. Ko said to them that he has the crown for killing Cheater Black and ain't nobody taking the crown from him. The 39ers responded like, we going to show you. Ko told them they was never going to catch him. Sure enough, 39ers got sidetracked while in the mall, and Ko was able to slip away to another car. They lost him. Merle was angry about that situation. On or about February 19, 2011, Breezy, Pound, and Real were driving in a vehicle together when they spotted Terence Dennis, who was an associate of the Ryder Die Gang, near the 2300 block of North Galvez Street. Pound, Real, to get out of the vehicle and shoot Dennis. Real exited the vehicle with a Bushmaster 223 assault rifle with a monkey nuts and Chaz Dennis down the street. He then shot and killed him. Just for context, Monkey Nuts is a double drum magazine attachment, and you can guess why that's the name. Moving along though. One day, a dude named Little John, or June, had robbed a woman who Rabbit was supplying with heroin. Also, June was suspected of killing a dude named Giz. 
On February 20, 2011, G-Strip members were having a jam, meaning that had a DJ outside playing music. People were in attendance, including Little John. Rabbit was in his car sleep because he was upset that Breezy didn't let him kill some other dude he wanted to kill that day from the desire. They said he was going to mess the money up and make it hot. Anyway, Pooney ran up to Rabbit's car and told him Little John was there. Rabbit went to the yard to see if he was there and saw Breezy telling Little John to leave before he gets killed basically. Breezy was already shaking his head no when he seen Rabbit coming because he knew Rabbit wanted to kill Little John. Little John walked off. At that moment, Evans, Real, Soul, and Pooney got in an Impala and started following Little John. Rabbit knew what they were about to do, so he flagged them down and jumped in. The Impala looked like a police car, so Little John didn't know what was going on when it pulled up next to him. Evans who was driving, rolled the window down and shot Little John with a 410 handgun, which is a revolver-looking handgun that shoots shotgun shells, Little John fell, and the members got out and approached him. Rabbit emptied out the 223 with the monkey nuts on Little John, and Soul shot him with a 40 caliber, Real shot him with a 40 caliber, and Pooney shot him with a SKS, and they just kept shooting him. After that, they parked the Impala in the apartments, hopped the gate, and went back to the party like nothing. The cops would soon shut the party down. This was Soul's first murder, and when Leroy called Rabbit later because he heard about the murder, Rabbit told him about the situation. Sometime after this, Rabbit, T-Red, Leroy and another dude, Money, were attending the Hornets playoff game. They received a call that Money's brother, G-Baby, had gotten killed at the DeQuery shop on Carrollton and Earhart. When they got to the scene, other 39ers were already there. The suspected killer or killers was from the Caliop, and the 39ers discussed retaliation. They attempted to get them, but the situation wasn't right. One day, they were able to make a move. Money supplied the 39ers with G-Baby's chopper, the AK-47, and he, Rabbit, AD, and another member, Big Wash, drove to the Caliab. Big Wash was the driver. AD had the 223 with the monkey nuts, and Rabbit told him that when they get there, just shoot. The plan was to just shoot until somebody falls, and Rabbit would go over and finish them off. AD did just that, shooting the 223 until he knocked someone down. Rabbit went over to the guy and the guy pleaded for his life, saying he had nothing to do with nothing or the G-Baby murder. Perfect. Rabbit let him get his plea off, then shoot him up until he was dead. The person was later identified as Floyd Moore. Later, Money was crying and thanking Rabbit for retaliating for his brother's death, which was no problem for Rabbit, as he too had love for G-Baby. Not too long after this, there was another outside DJ party on the G-Strip. The members called Rabbit and told him that a dude named Al was at the party. Al was from a few blocks away, and Rabbit knew Al from the boys and girls club back in the days. He was also suspected of killing a guy named Danny from the Florida Projects. Around this time, Al was going around saying he was going to kill more people from the G-Strip because they weren't thinking they were too much and all that. Rabbit went to the DJ party in his drop-top Solara, ready to kill Al. Big Wash would be the driver, Pooney was there and Real was there as well. Rabbit said the plan was for Pooney to do the shooting, and the rest finished them off, but Rel insisted that he wanted to shoot from the car. It was a lot of innocent people out there, and Rabbit knew that Real could sometime be erratic with the shooting. Rabbit felt it wasn't in his best interest to be involved with a drill, and told Wash to let him out, but told the guys to punish Al. It was also leanward that Kendrick Smoothers was on the strip too. G-Strip members had a beef with Kendrick because he was playing both sides. Kendrick was friends with Ko, but said he was going to stop hanging with Ko. Sometime before this party, he became a target because he and Ko was suspected of shooting at ELO from the G-Strip. Even so, Kendrick could have been none the wiser that Rabbit had plans to kill him. Rabbit didn't get to kill Kendrick this day, but while in his thoughts, he heard gunshots. This meant that the guys had probably been successful in killing Al. Come to find out, Pooney shot the guy, and Real shot too, and kept shooting as the car pulled off. Al didn't die, and Rabbit was upset that they didn't get out the car and finish the job. Two days later, there was an attempt on Kendrick's life. So, what we didn't mention earlier, is that Rabbit owed Kendrick money for some drug business that it went bad. He called Kendrick and told him he had his money, but it was a setup. Rabbit and Smothers went back and forth about a place to meet, but finally Rabbit told him to meet him on Desire Street near Bunny Friend Park at North Roman Street, in the Nine Ward. 
Smothers drove to the location with his friend, Gregory Keyes, who was unarmed and sitting in the passenger seat. When Smothers and Keyes arrived at Bunny Friend Park, Smothers did not see Rabbit, so he called him, and Rabbit told Smothers to meet him on Congress and North Villiers streets. Rabbit had already arrived. He was standing with Evans outside a black M35 Infinity. Rabbit told him, I'm going to get your money, and walked off into a dark alley. Evans Lewis walked up to the passenger side of the car and started speaking with Keyes. Smothers started to get out of the car and looked across the hood of the car and saw Evans leaning over it holding a gun. Evans Lewis raised the gun and shot at Smothers, hitting him in the face. As Smothers was lying on the ground, Real and Evans shot up Gregory Keyes. The shooting paused, and Real and Evans turned to Smothers, who was still on the ground. Smothers was shot at close range approximately seven times, however, more than 30 total casings were found on the scene. Immediately after the shooting, Rabbit and Real and Evans entered the Infinity and fled the scene. Smothers wasn't dead though, he entered his vehicle with keys and attempted to drive towards the city to a hospital. While doing so, Smothers wrecked his vehicle. Police and emergency services arrived at the accident scene at approximately 10 p.m. and spoke to Smothers, who had been shot several times. Smothers told the police that Rabbit from the G-Strip was one of the two perpetrators. Keyes, who was unarmed, was pronounced dead by the medical personnel who arrived on the scene. Evidence found on the scene of the shooting included 16 7.62 casings, which were fired from an AK-47 assault rifle, and 15 40 caliber casings. The police also located one 45 caliber Sig Sauer handgun at the crime scene. This gun was loaded. Smothers admitted to possessing this firearm, but stated he did not fire it. At this time, Smothers identified Rabbit and as one of the shooters from a six-person photo lineup. Smothers later identified Evans Lewis as the second shooter. Later on, Smothers would change his story and state that it was in fact Real and Evans standing over him, as opposed to Rabbit and Real. Shortly after, Nellie's baby mother called Rabbit and told him that Smoothers was still alive. Rabbit was upset because he knew Smoothers would know it was a setup. Sure enough, Evans later let Rabbit know he was wanted for murder. Breezy bought some new boost phones for Rabbit, and Rabbit told him he just wanted to party till they catch him. He didn't think it was that serious, but the next day he went to Miami. Breezy, Weefus, Nellie, Merle, Leroy, T. Red and Elo went to Miami as well. Well down there, they seen the FBI, so Rabbit knew it was more serious than he thought. At one point law enforcement made a move on the crew, but Rabbit was able to slip away and lay low on the beach. After that, Rabbit bought a Haitian dread wig to disguise himself. He would also sneak back to New Orleans to get a fake ID before returning to Miami. He was on the run for a month give or take before being arrested. Rabbit would end up taking the stand for almost five hours, testifying about his crimes and the involvement of others. He was sad he had to do so, turning on his brothers for some freedom. He particularly stressed how he felt bad about implicating T. Red in the crimes. He still ended up getting four life sentences, but some say he now has 40 years. You can check it out and let us know in the comments. It was a dramatic testimony, the whole process. Breezy also testified about his crimes, the drug dealing and the killings. Freak, who participated in the Magnolia Shorty murder, also testified. Then we have Big Wash who testified. We will have to do a separate story on him, as his timeline is different, and he was involved in about 8 murders. He was from the 3NG side of things, so that's another story. Evans Lewis got 30 years. Real, Leroy, Pound, Wu Di, Tired, and Trap, all were given life prison sentences. AD got 21 years, and Sol got 78 months. In 2013, Merle, 33 at the time, was gunned down at the chocolate bar in the 500 block of South Broad Street. It's unclear whether Offray's killing was drug or gang related. Someone was charged, but the district attorney's office refused the murder charge in May 2014, citing a lack of witness cooperation. The person was named in a federal drug indictment two months later. As of 2022, the 39ers lost another member. Not sure what the reason is. Ron Lowney, known as Nelly, 31 at the time, was on South Claiborne Avenue and 1st Street just before 9.30 p.m. when a man opened fire. Lowney was struck multiple times and was taken to the hospital, where he died on Saturday, April 9. Another man suffered a single gunshot wound in the shooting. But this about wraps it up for this one, and as always, stay low and thanks for watching.